All right, this lab is going to be the preparation of para red and related azo dyes um, for our uh, equipment. So what you see in front of you right now, we've got sodium carbonate, uh, one molar hydrochloric acid, one molar sodium hydroxide, three molar hydrochloric acid, P nitrinolin, resorcinol, two naphthenol, and uh, related uh, glassware and an ice bath, of course, as well as a hot plate with a stir bar. All right, in this step, we're going to be measuring out 1.381 grams of P nitroaniline. Um, so there we're just about close in. He's got it. All right, so now we've got 8 milliliters of 3 molar hydrochloric acid. And we're going to dissolve the P nitroaniline that we measured out earlier in the hydrochloric acid. And we're just going to stir that until it becomes uh, nice and solvated. All right, so we're adding some heat to the mixture right now to help dissolve the P nitroaniline in the hydrochloric acid, uh, just using a standard hot plate. And we added uh, five milliliters of deionized water because the uh, P nitroaniline was not quite um, fully dissolving in the hydrochloric acid. And uh, now it's got like almost a paste-like substance going on here. All right, so we're going to cool down the uh, dissolved P nitroaniline and hydrochloric acid, and we're going to cool it down in a bath of ice water. And you might notice an amine salt precipitate as you cool the solution down while it's uh, in the ice bath. All right, so this was not included as one of the original ingredients. This is uh, sodium nitrite, and we prepared a solution of one molar uh, sodium nitrite in deionized water, um, which will be used in the next step. Okay, so now we're adding 10 milliliters of one molar sodium nitrite that was freshly prepared uh, about a minute ago, two minutes ago, and we're just gonna stir that in there nicely until uh, until it gets a nice solution going. All right, so now that we added our sodium nitrite, we're going to be testing it to see if we added enough with the uh, starch paper here. And we're looking for a blue-black color, and we have a black color that's slightly blue. So yeah, that looks like we got enough sodium nitrite in there to, uh, to be good. All right, as you can see, we've got a little bit of precipitate forming um, in the mixture. And uh, in the next step, we're going to be separating this into two equal parts, and beaker one and beaker two. And we'll do that. Don't do it yet, but yeah. All right, so we've mixed, or I'm sorry, we've separated the uh, mixture into two equal parts, one labeled D1 and one labeled D2. All right, so we've got uh, 40 milliliters of one molar sodium hydroxide and we've got how many grams did we? We got 0.94 grams of resorcinol weighed out in a nice weigh boat and now we're going to mix them in that beaker. Alright, so the next step we're going to be mixing the D1 beaker from the first part of the experiment with the uh, resorcinol beaker that we're just making right now. And uh, once these are combined, uh, what should happen is a nice uh, purple color should begin forming after about 15 minutes. Alright, so here is the mixture of the uh, original mixture and the resorcinol mixture. Oh, wow, there you go. Clearly, see a nice purple color.
All right, so in the next step, we're going to be using standard uh, vacuum filtration. Just got this hooked up to a uh, vacuum source. Standard flask. Got a funnel and a, um, a filter in here. A little perforated funnel. And we're just going to be <laughs> this obviously suction in through there, and we're just going to be vacuum filtering the uh, the dye. You can see it's filtering out the uh, liquid part, and we're going to be conserving the uh, the solid. It's a little bit thick, so it's going to take a little while to get through there. If I wanted to make it All right, so about three or four minutes later, we've got a nice gummy dye paste left over. It's not quite done, but it's the basic idea. All right, we're just mixing some of the uh, the dye filtrate with acetone. And we're going to show a fun little property where we can change the uh, color of the uh, of the dye with an acid or a base from one color to the next. Alright, so we're going to show a fun little property of the dye. We're going to add some um, base first and change the color. You can see a nice blue color forming. And then now if we add some acid, the base was uh, one molar sodium hydroxide and this is acid, uh, one molar hydrochloric acid. We're going to add that in there, and it should turn a nice yellow color. Yeah, and there you go. Nifty. All right, now we're just uh, scraping out the filtered out product, which is the, uh, the dye, basically. And we're going to go and weigh it out. And then after that is the drying process, and I'm pretty much done. All right, so we're going with the uh, the dye, and we're going to put it in this uh, drying oven overnight, and that'll give us the finished, nice dry dye. And obviously, this lab created a little bit of a mess, so don't forget to clean up your lab station, because uh, otherwise somebody else is going to have to do that, and they do not enjoy that. Hey, professor. <laughs>